Let's talk about the structure of research papers. Research papers usually have very similar structures. At the top of the paper is the title, authors, and their affiliations. The abstract is approximately 150 words, a quarter of a page. The first section is introduction. This is approximately 15% of the paper. If your paper has 8 pages, introduction will be approximately 1.2 pages. The second section will be background and related work. In this section, the authors explain what has been done. This will be a summary of uh, the state of the art. This section is approximately 10% of the paper. The following two sections are optional, depends on the subject of the paper. For some papers, they need to describe the problem more carefully. In some cases, they need to provide examples. For some papers, the problems occur only in specific settings. Those papers have to explain the situations when the problems occur. These two optional sections are approximately 10% of the paper. The next section will present the solution or the discovery. This is the major part of the paper and is approximately 30 to 40% of the entire paper. For a paper of 8 pages, this section will have about 3 pages. The next section will be evaluation and comparison. This section explains what's the difference between this paper and earlier work. Some papers have a section called discussion, then the paper will enter the conclusion and the references. For a research paper, the reference section is usually two to three times the number of pages. For a paper of eight pages, the number of references is approximately 16 to 24 references. It is important to follow the same structure of a uh, typical research papers. Some students say, I want to be creative. You have to understand creativity comes from the content, not the format, not the structure. Imagine you are a musician. Every musician understands the representation of a music notes. You shouldn't redefine the notes. If you redefine the notes, nobody can understand you. Instead, the creativity comes from the arrangement of the notes not the definition of the notes. For research papers, the format should be the same. The creativity comes in content of the paper, not the format. Let's consider a few examples of a paper's title. The first few examples come from 2019 Computer Vision and Pattern Recognition. The first title is Efficient Video Classification Using Fewer Frames. The second example is learning to generate synthetic data while compositing. The next example is weekly supervised person reidentification. The next example is guided stereo matching. Do you think these titles clearly explain what the papers are about? Let's consider formal examples from another conference, Mobisys. The first example is graphics aware power governing for mobile device. Understanding and detecting overlay-based Android malware at the market scale. Liquid testing with your smartphone. Are RFID sensing systems ready for the real world? A common question from among many beginning researchers is whether to add the project name in the title. Many people like to create interesting name for their project. Many projects have interesting acronyms such as MURP means My Unknown Research Project. And many, many people like to put such an acronym at the beginning of their paper's title. If you are the author, of course, it's your decision. I discourage you from doing that because people don't know what the acronym means. A paper's title is precious space. You should make every word meaningful. If you have 
a word that does not mean anything to a reader, you waste this precious space. Therefore, I discourage people from putting the name of the project as the title. What is the definition of a, an author? Who can be called an author? H4E has the following definition. An author has to make a significant intellectual contribution to the paper. Please be aware that uh, if somebody's contribution is finding typos, then this person will not be considered as an author. An author should have contributed to the drafting of the article and review or revise for intellectual content. Notice the word intellectual appears again. An author has to approve the final version for publication. ACM is another professional organization. It also has its own definition of authors. The author should have made substantial intellectual contribution, notice the word intellectual again, to some components of original work. An author does not have to make the intellectual contribution to the entire paper. It's possible a paper is written by several people and each person has part of a contribution. An author needs to have an intellectual contribution. An author should participate in writing the paper. Aware the paper has been submitted for publication and be held accountable for issues related to the correctness and integrity of the paper.